FLM, wide open thinking, world-class work, and far-reaching results. Now with locations in Minneapolis, Columbus, Indianapolis, and Washington, D.C. A strategic marketing and communications company dedicated to serving clients who specialize in the business of agriculture and the life of rural communities. Congressman Kurt Schrader from Oregon's 5th District, thank you for joining us. You bet, Spencer. Thank you. Well, for starters, can you tell us a little bit about your district and the kinds of agriculture in it? Well, it's got all kinds of agriculture. We're the garden spot of Oregon. We'd say uh, yeah, maybe next to California, the garden spot of our country. Uh, it's a very uh, specialty crop-oriented uh, district. Runs south of Portland, north of uh, uh, Corvallis, from the coast to the mountains, the, pretty much the entire Willamette Valley. So we've got a lot of vegetable crops, a lot of fruit crops. We do a lot of seed work. We have Christmas trees, uh, you know, quite a variety of crops out there actually. So it, I enjoy working on the ag issues as a farmer and as a veterinarian. I've made my living off the land my whole life. Now let's talk about that experience as a farmer and a veterinarian because there's not a lot of people in Congress that can claim that level of experience. Uh, we see as a result of that the type of legislation we have and some of the problems we had getting the farm bill through. People just didn't understand what was going on. They assume it's all big agribusiness on my side of the aisle and that's not true. Uh, family farms are alive and well. My son is right now taking over our farm. So do you think the level of representation that farmers have in Congress, and not necessarily their, their representative as in the person who represents their district, but farmers themselves serving as congressmen, do you think that level of representation is adequate? i uh, be honest with you, no. It could be a little greater. Uh, I think agriculture in general has to uh, uh, step it up a notch. The world is changing and the consumer is changing. We see it with uh, uh, legislation on how the FDA does things, uh, the, the GMO craze that has no safety or health uh, uh, validity at all in it. Uh, people are disconnected from where their produce comes from. That wasn't true 30, 40 years ago. They understood that it was grown somewhere. Now they assume it just mirac miraculously appears uh, in the grocery store. We have to do a better job of relating to the consumer and telling our story about who we really are. We have the uh, best environmental standards in the world, the best working conditions in the world, uh, the food is the safest in the world, uh, and we just don't communicate that very well, and I think we need to do more of that. So what made you want to take the shift from uh, farmer and veterinarian to congressman? Uh, well, that's a good question. I asked myself. I used to be the most trusted member uh, of the community as a veterinarian and farmer, and now I'm downwardly mobile as just a politician. <laughs> but uh, uh, no, I, I, I dabbled in it back home, back in Oregon. Uh, I was on the planning commission for my, my little town area. I uh, was interested in the quality of life. Preserving farmland was a big part of uh, what we did as urban areas grew. Uh, when I got into the state legislature, again, was a big advocate for the farming interests, uh, right to farm legislation, uh, worried about land use planning that would encroach, uh, drive up the value of farmers' property to where they couldn't farm. So Oregon has actually a very unique approach to that, uh, to make sure the farming can stay even in and around urban areas. Uh, and I want to bring that message uh, uh, to Congress as part of what uh, I ran for. Uh, I ended up uh, uh, get to a point where I wanted to retire, uh, sell my veterinary practice, uh, turn the farm over to the younger generation, as I said, and it seemed like I had learned a few life lessons. There are very few people in Congress, in my opinion, that uh, have uh, raised a family, run a business, and actually had some uh, experience with uh, legislative body and some of the, the problems you have in trying to get things passed. It's not like running your business overnight. So I, I felt I would be value added here with my background. Now, in previous terms, you served on the House Agriculture yep. Committee. You don't anymore, Situation. currently serving on budget and, and energy and commerce. Right. So why do you think it's important for, I mean, there's no shortage of people on the House Agriculture Committee with agriculture experience. Why do you think it's important for people with agricultural experience to be on other committees as well? Well, because we have to tell our story. As you know, in Washington, D.C., uh, committees have broad jurisdictions. Uh, the Energy and Commerce Committee sees about Oh, 75 percent of all legislation that goes through the House of Representatives. Uh, FDA is in our purview, the Federal Food and Drug Administration. So it's important not only to talk about the production end of agriculture, but the regulatory side of agriculture. Uh, and I think add a voice that understands how produce is raised, how animals are raised, 
some of the good husbandry practices that are out there can push back on the urban mythology about, as I said before, what goes on in agriculture. So it's really important, I think, to have uh, farmers, veterinarians, uh, other people with farm backgrounds uh, on these other committees so they can help tell that story uh, that is sometimes gets so uh, uh, written out of control by folks that really don't know what goes on on the land. Now what can you tell us about those committees and some of the things that might fall under their purview outside of agriculture? Well uh, a lot of farmers are worried about GMO. You know there's this big craze uh, by a few mythologists to say that somehow GMO food is better and safer. That's absolutely false. Uh, while the Ag Committee has some jurisdiction, uh, that's basically a labeling issue, which is Food and Drug Administration, which is the Energy and Commerce Committee that I'm on. So it's important to have representation on these other committees to back up what we know on the Ag side of things about how food and produce and, and livestock are raised so that the consumer can get good information, we're all in, in favor of that, but not information that could be misleading. Uh, and I think that's, uh, that's our sacred mission, if you will, as a member of Congress, to be good informationalists for the people out there that some of these issues are pretty complicated, you, you read a blog, you get an internet, uh, and you assume something's true, and it is not. And our job is to hopefully be honest brokers of infor information for our folks back home. Now, your experience in farming involves being not just a farmer, but an organic farmer. Yep. Now, in your time in production and in your legislative experience, how have you seen the perception of organic farming change? Well, that sure changed. Uh, I remember way back in the day, was that early 80s, when I was uh, uh, actually part of TILTH, which is Oregon's uh, organic uh, overseeing a uh, agency, really was a nonprofit. I uh, helped write the guidelines way back in the day for livestock. They didn't have many folks that knew a lot about livestock uh, at the time to make sure livestock was grown organically. Uh, and uh, we were cutting edge, uh, you know, trying to get uh, uh, community sustainable uh, organizations out there, have people come out and buy organic produce, either pick your own or we pick for you. Um, and it was tough to make a dollar. Now. It's a great business. It's a great adjunct to a lot of conventional farms. I have some of my conventional farmers next to me that have an organic section, if you will, because they see it as a great market opportunity. And some people, frankly, are sensitive to that stuff. Uh, there is a legitimate health issue there for some folks that uh, some of the uh, uh, pesticides, some of the additives, some of the stuff that goes on on the farm that fine for 95% of the people, some people just have sensitivities to, and organic's the way to go. And some, for, for some people, it's a lifestyle. They prefer to have that lifestyle choice. And uh, as I said earlier, I think it's important for the farmers to be ready to meet the consumer's demand. If that's part of what the consumer wants, uh, we ought to be able, especially in America, where it's gonna be honestly done. I worry about getting organic stuff from Chile or Peru or Russia or pick your country. Uh, I don't think they have the same safeguards we do in this country. We spent a lot of time in the Farm Bill, uh, last Congress, making sure that organic was represented in a fair way. Uh, working with and alongside our conventional farmers, not in opposition to. And so at this point in time, uh, organic is getting to be conventional. Uh, and I think it's really good that we have a range of choices here in this country for people to choose to see how they get their produce. And uh, uh, I wish I was in it at, the, at this point in time. My, my son's actually trying to go into organic hops right now. So let's see if he's able to cash in where I was just a pioneer. <laughs> Now, for the last couple of years, we've seen different states, different counties across the country uh, take, take an approach to GMO labeling laws within their, within their respective jurisdictions. Uh, it was widely seen that 2015 was going to be the year of the food fight in Washington, that there was going to be some kind of a national GMO labeling standard. Now, the House passed a bill regarding GMO labeling. What was your opinion of that legislation, and where do you think the solution will ultimately lie in regards to some kind of agreement between the House and the Senate on GMO labeling? Oh boy, uh, last part I'm not sure I can uh, answer. It's tough. The Senate does its own mystical things, uh, just as they, I'm sure, think we do our mystical things. Uh, the, the biggest concern I had as a scientist, a veterinarian, and as a farmer uh, with the GMO issue is that a lot, of the, a lot of the allegations were not based on fact, and they somehow impugned uh, conventional uh, agriculture. and. For the longest time, I had trouble understanding what is the issue. Uh, we have genetically modified stuff from the beginning of time. Uh, what was done in the field is now done in the laboratory. This is 21st century. I don't see any difference there. It's, it's not a question of more chemicals or additives or anything like that. It's a question of uh, gene changing. If you're into organics, 
be honest with you, that should be a good thing. Instead of having to spread excess pesticides or herbicides, uh, you can genetically change the plant so that you don't have to uh, have these sprays or potential toxins in the environment. So I, I was really mystified for a long time, Spencer. What, what is the problem with this? And I think cut to the chase, to be a very honest, it's a lot of people uh, don't like Monsanto uh, and taking it out uh, as re on them as a result of this GMO labeling thing. Uh, two different issues. And uh, as a legislator and as a scientist, I just, it just really bothers me severely that people would in, uh, indicate that there's any safety or health issues with GMO food. There just is not. It's never, every study, Department of Ag, every, that's not the case. Uh, but people do argue, especially in my state, well, geez, Kurt, I wanna know. I just wanna know. You know, I, I, I get, I'll buy what you're saying. It's not unhealthy and it's not unsafe, but I just wanna know. You know maybe it's, again, that lifestyle choice. Um, and the bill that we came up with got to that. It actually said, all right, you know, we're not gonna force everyone to label GMO because there is no health and safety concerns and that's what FDA, FDA's role should be. Only get involved if there's health and safety concerns or you know, nutritional content. Uh, so what we did is say, all right, here's the deal. We'll do it like we do with organic and some of these others. If you want to know what's in the produce or, or if it's GMO or not, you can have a GMO label. You apply to have the GMO label. You have your production set up that way. You have a canned or processed that way. Uh, then you can get a GMO label. But not every food stuff out there that has been genetically modified forever needs to have that label. So I thought it was a good compromise. Uh, of course, the true believers don't think that was a good compromise. Uh, the Senate is hopefully got something going. Uh, they're talking about doing a two year maybe modest uh, preemption at this point. But I think that's a tough sell, Spencer, without some sort of federal legislation uh, in place to make sure that people, again, have the right to know. And let's look a little bit broader here at really your time in, in Congress as a whole. You've been up here for, for a few terms now. Mm -hmm. How have you seen Congress change since you were first elected? Well, when I got here, Democrats were in the majority. <laughs> uh, overnight, we were in the minority. Uh, Democrats overreached. Uh, I will argue respectfully. I think some of the base policies were good for America. Everyone wanted health care changed. Uh, we were looking at going to a more renewable energy future. Whether you were, whatever uh, cause you ascribe to climate change, everyone I talked to is pretty aware the climate has changed. Uh, you know, we were worried about the banking structures. Uh, but, uh, you know, Democrats tried to go it alone, and with all honesty, Republicans weren't going to cut any deal with this on anything anyway. Uh, so both parties dug in, if you will, and as a result, uh, uh, Democrats lost the majority. Uh, Republicans are in, in power at this point. But I'll say this, uh, last, i say the first, I've uh, been here eight years, I'd say the first three years, modest, product, very pro actually very productive. Uh, intervening two or three years, very unproductive, and the press has, I think, rightfully castigated us to some degree. But I'd argue that this last year in particular, uh, maybe it's because my Republican friends have to show they can govern since they have both the House and the Senate at this point, uh, we've been very productive. Uh, the Energy and Commerce Committee that I'm on, a great bipartisan committee. I actually really enjoy the committee. I love the Ag Committee because it was run the same way. I don't know if that's still the case, but it was a great bipartisan committee uh, when Colin and Frank were, were heading it up. We got a lot done. We got the farm bill done. Huge step forward. Great for my corner of the country. Uh, I think it showed that we weren't going to do the direct payments, so we're keeping faith with uh, the modern American consumer about where Ag fits in. Uh, and on energy and commerce, I mean, uh, it, it's been great. We've done some great things on the healthcare side, despite the fact Republicans and Democrats disagree about Obamacare. We passed a 21st century cures bill that gets products to market faster and yet still safely. Uh, we ended up fixing the, the issues that seniors have, seeing doctors. Uh, we just uh, uh, have had some great wins, I think, in that committee. And frankly, uh, recently outside of my committee, we just had a reauthorization uh, for the first time, what, 10, 15 years for elementary and secondary education act, you know, for schools, for kids, K through 12. That's been tried long before the partisanship has gotten to the where it is now. Same thing on transportation, first long-term transportation reauthorization bill in 10, 12 years now. And uh, those are nice wins, but they don't get talked about because we're not fighting each other. It's not about ISIL or some controversial issue, but uh, for everyone at home, most important thing I think is educating folks and getting goods to market. If you're a farmer, that's probably pretty darn important to you too. 
Congressman Kurt Trader from Oregon's 5th District, thank you for joining us. Hey, thanks, Spencer.